This video is brought to you by our wonderful sponsors, UEI Test Instruments, Essential Instruments, Outstanding Service, The Quick Connects by Way Technologies, and The Tight Taper, making tight places to tape a breeze. I'm on a maintenance right now on a York Air Handler. Five years old. The coil. Is already dirty. It looks like they replaced the supply. But not the return. They've got some return air leaking issues. We're going to have to see about sealing up that return for her. Come over here with a bucket of mastic and seal that whole damn box to the floor where the Pittsburghs go together, where the cap goes on. We cannot pull and clean the coil because of that beam of where they installed it. So we'll have to, we'll have to come up with something. All right, here's the uh, outdoor unit. It's an older York. It's also a five ton. And the B tells me it's from February. The W means Wichita. The B means February. The N tells me the year, which is 04. Believe me, I do not have that memorized. Like the newer Yorks, it'll be W, then a number, then a letter, then another number. But on these older ones, everything was letters. Sorry about that. But I do, but, but I have a chart though, because, you know, I was a York dealer for a very long time. So I'm very familiar with the product. But the W means it was built in Wichita. The B means the month is February. And the N tells me it's from 2004. So they replaced the indoor section without replacing the outdoor section. And now we're just gonna check our uh, amp draws. And All right, so I got the compressor amps at 18, which is, that's high, man. Even for a five ton, that's, that's really high. And this thing is burning some energy. I mean, I, I've put in the ring 14 sears before and they only draw like 11. 10 to 11 but I mean it's working so if I can find the condenser fan motor it'll be down here in a plug in yep right here that's gonna be my and I can't see the data tag because this is just a model number they give you with a charging chart this is the actual data tag, and as you can see, it's it's gone. That condenser fan motor's drawing at 1.2. All right, we'll check this. Uh, and also, you know, if the capacitor is weak, that can cause issues too. So kill the disconnect and check that. I know this is probably a boring video, but you know, it's better than not loading anything. So this is a 50, uh, nope. 55 plus five. I took the common wire off. Uh, it might help if I put the meter on microfarad, so. Damn thing's actually putting out 58. Okay. Check the fan. Fan is, wait a minute. Fifty four on the fan.
I've pulled all the common wires off before and never had that. I mean, just the common off before. And I know that's her ma common. This is a weird one here. Fan to common. Okay, there we go. 5.0. Now let's check the damn hermetic. 53. Okay, that's fine. Capacitor's good. touch anything. I can't really see with the sun. Oh, it looks, uh, it's not horrible, but it's a little black in there, but not horrible. Okay. I mean, all in all, it looks fine. So I'll let her know. Hey guys, so look, I just wanted to end this video just to let you guys know, because I didn't get any more footage. I went in the house, I spoke to the customer, and I told her that everything looked good. Capacitor looked good, the refrigerant charge looked good, which y'all didn't see. It was kind of cool outside, so I just threw the stub gauge on there, but it did look good. And, um, you know, for the cooler weather, I didn't see an, anything that alarmed me. So I went in there and I told her her capacitor checked out. Contactor was a little black, but not bad. Uh, told her her refrigerant charge looked good. I didn't see the coil peeling away or anything. I did hit it with water off camera. I didn't put no cleaner on it. I didn't see any reason to put cleaner on it. So I just hit it with the hose. The only thing that I told her that I saw that I didn't like was that compared to the newer units today. You know, we were pulling about 18.2, uh, 18.3 on the compressor, as you saw, and then about 1.2 on the condenser fan motor uh, you know you guys saw that as well and so we're right at 20 amps there about 19 and a half amps and I told her that a new unit you know would would pull much less and, and now I didn't say it in a sales pitch way because I wasn't going to try to sell that lady a condenser yes is it what year was it uh did I say I think I said 04 yeah 2004 so it was 18 19 years old wait let's see we're in 2020. Yeah, 16, oh, 16 years old. It's a 16-year-old unit. And, um, you know, so I, I told her, I said, you know, it's 16 years old, but it's it, it's doing okay besides, you know, pulling. I said 20 amps is kind of high for, you know, for an outdoor unit. I told her what she owed me, and she paid me for my visit, and she goes, hey, how much would it cost to replace that thing? And I said, oh, well, I said, I can go work you up a price. I said, but I said, there, it's okay. I mean, it's not dead. She said, yeah, but it's 16 years old, and you say it's pulling more amps, you know. And I told her that, you know, a new unit would draw less amps, but I told her that the unit was running fine. But anyway, long story short, she uh, I gave her two estimates on two different condensers, a ream and a comfort maker. Uh, I pushed the ream and uh, gave her a, a price on the builder's model comfort maker also, so... That's what she wanted. Now, another thing, too, is that I'm going to pull the coil out with, without unsoldering it. I'm going to cut the drain and just slide it out as far as I can because you saw we had that wood beam right there. Man, they should have they tried to do something better than that. But anyway, and I'm going to brush it real good. I mean, it's a very thin layer. It's not like it's caped in there. It's just sitting on top of the fence. I mean, if you take a brush to it, it'll fall right off. So I'm going to, like, you know, maybe even try to vacuum it off or brush it off and then spray some, uh, uh, you know, spray some of that Viper, no rinse on there. Um, I, we're doing that whether she decides to replace the condenser or not. 
But if she goes with the condenser, we'll just do everything in one day. I'm going to take that return box and I'm going to paint that whole return box with mastic. I mean, not y'all know what I'm saying. I'm going to paint the bottom where it touches the floor. I'm going to paint the Pittsburghs. Any any joints that where where the uh where the cap or the knock on head goes on, I'm gonna paint all that with mastic, and just seal that return box because they replaced the supply and all the duct, but they left the old return box, and there's multiple multiple cracks about this big, and it's just sucking that attic air, and that's where the dust is coming from. So I'll take the sheet metal hammer, you know, if I if they're real big and close them down, and then paint it real good and seal the shit out of that box. So uh, that's it. That that's that's uh, that's that's what we're gonna. If she decides not to replace the condenser, we are gonna clean the coil with a, a brush and some Viper, no rinse, and paint the return with mastic. But I really believe she's gonna do one of those condensers. I'm almost positive she will. And if she does, well, then we'll do everything in one day, and I'll try to get some film on it, whichever way she decides to go. Thank you all for watching. Oh,